Right. Well, okay, kids. Um, this is the story uh, of what's happening with the hand lettering lessons this week. I got way behind on some work I've got. If you've noticed here, my little makeshift uh, easel is turning out to be really productive. So I've got signs on top of signs, and I really can't get to the, the easel to give a lesson on um, your curved shapes. But I was really, really generous with you last week, if you ask me, and I actually pushed it too far. It was uh, too long of a little video clip, and um, I got carried away and gave you far more uh, freedom to play around with letters than I probably should have. So I think tonight, I have this sign that I need to paint. And I also need to express to you how important this single stroke letter is. If you can letter that single stroke letter, you can paint just almost any sign that you want to. And that's what we're going to do right now. Now we're going to take this brush. Oh, I don't have a palette. Here, here's a palette. I'll find one. Right here. This will work. We're going to paint this sign here, and we're going to use the very same one-stroke letters that I've been begging you to practice. I hope you've all done that, and I hope that you've gotten some benefit. Ooh, that is really, really thin. What's the matter with my paint? I thinned it earlier, but that's just far too thin. Look at that. That won't work. We have problems. We have problems. And that's probably not going to change. Let's see here what we can do about this. What is our problem? Okay. My goodness. Different palette. That wasn't working in it well. Okay. How about this one here? Now, if it's too thin, no, this will be just fine. It just wasn't stirred enough. Okay. Now, you notice you can clean your paint off of your ferrule by just doing this along your palette, or you can take your rag and pinch it at the ferrule, but you want to watch that. All right, now I've begged you to practice, so here we go. Let's hope that I've got my practice in as well. We're going to write the word popcorn. We're going to letter the word. And we're going to do it with a rounded tail end. We're going to come up here. And give that a nice swoop somewhere there in the middle. We're going to connect it all together. Now you have to use a lot of focus to make a pretty P. You've seen them ever since the second grade or you know what a P looks like. It's in your head. You're going to have to bring it out of your head. Start at the top, go all the way out to the edge, bringing it back. You can see where you want the bottom to be. Bring it up. Go way over here because I want to set my width. All right, I've set the width and I'm going around. We're going to make a nice corner right here. Look at that. We'll clean it up here. And it looks like a good enough toe to me. All right. Now, I don't usually like letters going up and down like this. They uh, they don't often work well, especially if you have I's and L's, uh, things of that nature. But I do know that you can make it attractive if you scatter your letters. And there's just hardly no perfect word other than popcorn to do this with. So I've chosen just to angle all my letters 
in just a strange catty corner position. Pop, we're on a C. Now, this is where sign painters get into a problem. I'll tell you, 8 out of 10 will misspell a word right in the middle of it. That's always fun. Pop, this is a C. We're going to go up here, all the way out to the edge. Now, see, it's not looking like a very pretty C to me right now. Okay, but I'm going to make it a pretty C. And remember, you learn how to twist that brush, and it's you who makes the brush do what it does. But uh, when I say it's you, it's the focus that you uh, maintain in your head. And after you've practiced these letters hundreds and hundreds of times, well, you'll know exactly what you're doing. Now we're going into another O. Setting my width. I don't care if I touch a little bit. That won't hurt the letter. Not on this bouncy stuff. In fact, I can't see a way in the world that you can hurt this letter right now. And we're working our way down. Set your width, come down, give you a round off bottom. There you go. All right. I loved a letter. And I think that if you give yourself, now we've got a, now, see, even I have to think here, we've got an R here that's rather particular. Hmm. We don't want him falling over, but we don't want him... There we go. We want him about like that. Now, that's probably not the best R I could have selected, but it's not bad. It's a little bit longer, but this is all just an illusion. Nothing is perfect with this. And good Lord, we got all the way down to the bottom without even having to worry about perfect. So we're sure not going to start worrying about it now. This is an N. All right. We got this going for us. Well, now, I don't know about you, but I'm rather pleased with it. What we do now is we go to our dirtiest, dirtiest paint thinner. We put that down any place it don't matter what. Throw that away. I need another palette. We'll use this right here. All right, the dirty, dirty thinner. Got it. Now our second dirty thinner is right here. And we're going to be using yellow. So I want a third wash just to make sure I've got that darker color out of there. All right, now we're going to use this, uh, look at this. Oh, this is just Rust-Oleum yellow. This is not even one shot. I've got this going here because I want it nice and bright. And they do have a big color there. So we're going to get this yellow worked up here real good. Got it. And we're going to work this little brush and see just what kind of magic it can do. It's the same size as what we just used. All right, we're coming down. Now, when you do this, you want to keep this width between the red and the yellow. You want to keep it even all the way down and around. Meaning that even there where this O is, I want it to be the same gap width as that. It doesn't look good if you're all over the place with this. It's going to be an outline. That's all it's going to be. 
cut that brush in there and make a nice point. We're looking for a little bit of snap because this is, after all, a bouncy sign. So let's act like we know what we're doing. Okay. Come down here. Whoops. Let's go to the top now. Why not? Making sure that that gap is pretty even there. And all it takes is focus. You can't lose focus on it or you've lost everything. Your head tells you what your hand is supposed to do. Your hand guides the brush. It all works together. And then we're still going down here. Now this is just a, a piece of masonite that I've primed out with uh, kills as a primer. And then I gave it a good coat of white paint, uh, just a Rust-Oleum enamel. I seem to work better with enamels. I guess it's from my long, long use of uh, one-shot paints. And I love gloss. And you see, I've painted uh, a lot, a lot of um, carnival signage. And it's bright, and it's colorful, and it's shiny. And I have a reputation of using bright, shiny colors. And I guess it's uh, something I'm not going to get over. And if you can notice here, I am just really wheeling, dealing that brush. I'm making it do all that dancing. I call it dancing. Just watch this brush. Uh, goodness sakes, it's uh, it's really doing its thing. Come down here, whip it around. We got no time to mess around. Let's get this job done. It's a fairly simple job. And it's nothing to be concerned with. Get that in there and come down there. All right, now we have some decisions to make. Um, we have the center of the letters. Well, we know that the O's and the C, they can just use something real silly like that. Uh, that just gives it flair is what that gives it. The C as well. And let's hit the O coming down this way. All right. Now the P and the R's, the P's and the R, are awfully thin and we're not going to mess with it. We are not even going to touch that with the yellow. So our next move is to get our dirty paint, uh, thinner. Where's another? Goodness gracious. All right, here we go. We got this here, all right, all right, our next color is going to be, you know what, I'm going to use this little flat brush for it, and it's going to be this ivory, let me put this one away, we're going to use this ivory right here, yeah, it's thick and it's just exactly what I want. We've got a red spot up here, so we're going to go ahead and we're going to make a kernel of popcorn right there. We're going to meet this one right here with this one, going over that uh, color there. This won't matter, and we'll make three. All right, just just make popcorn. What What do you think popcorn looks like? All right, we got those. How about one right here? Okay. Yeah. We're making popcorn. There's the popcorn. All right. I don't know how many popcorn. 
ones we need, but we'll get some popcorn in there. All right. How about popcorn up here? And I don't know how we're doing on time. I was rather shocked. My last little film turned out to be over 30 minutes. You guys should have warned me that I'd get carried away, but that's all right. There, we got that popcorn. Doing good with popcorn. It's all about the same. It's just strange shape. That's, everything is shapes. There's popcorn. Uh, a little bit of popcorn. There. I don't know. That's popcorn. We're going to rinse that brush out and we are going to use what is that? That's a lighter color yellow. Hmm, not quite prepared with my popcorn, but that's all right. We're going to, no, we're not going to do that, Darla. That's silly. All right, we're going to poke a hole in this lighter yellow, but I don't know if it's going to make any difference. Okay, what do we got here? We want things on the... All right, there we go. It is a different color, and it looks buttery. All we're looking for is buttery right now. You know what I mean? It's hot buttered popcorn. Whoops, we'll let that run. It won't matter. Okay. We don't really want runs. Okay. Popcorn. But you don't have to be frightened of your work. Uh, there, you're going to have uh, some winners. You're going to have some losers. There's not a single sign I've ever painted that I wouldn't do different if I had it to do over again. And many times I've been forced to do a sign over. Uh, I mean, there's no shame in having to do a sign over. There's really not. Uh, don't be fearful of that. We're gonna set that right there and we're gonna drop down to a little bit smaller brush, rinse it out. We're gonna go over here to the orange. Do I have this opened up? No. Poke a hole in this, that won't matter. All right. Hmm. Orange. And we're just going to use this butcher paper down here for a palette. It don't matter. You can use anything for a palette. Anything at all. But now, what we've done here is um, we do have paint on the ferrule, so... There you go. All right, so now we are going to go like this here. Okay. And we're making pop. Now, everybody's popcorn will turn out differently. What does it matter? And I could maybe use a different selection of color, but I'm good with this. This will work. I hope I'm still good on time. I don't want to bore you to death with these little samples I'm making here. And the last one I felt really was just a tad too long. So I'll try to be better. I also ordered a uh, tripod so that I can put my camera up and um, 
do this on my own sometimes. I might feel comfortable about that. We'll have to see. All right. Do we have popcorn coming along here? Tedious little devils, aren't they? Tell me when I'm done here. Okay, rinse this brush out. Let's come back with this brush. Now we're looking for white. Let's poke it in there. White right here. All right, and on we're gonna highlight some of these. I might should wait until this dries a little bit. Um but I think that you get the idea here. We're just making popcorn kernels. And it don't matter what you do with them. Um, and then you need are not good. Okay, we've just about got this. But I hope that the ones that are actually practicing this and they have a purpose in mind, whether it be a hobby or um, whatever your purpose is to study hand lettering, uh, I hope you'll find my little tutorials here helpful. Um, I know that you have to get this, uh, if you want a letter, now you have to get this single stroke uh, alphabet. Now you just have to. There's no working around it. And so the quicker you get your lesson sessions done and over with, well, the quicker you'll be hustling sign works. Okay, we're going to make this pop. We're going to make them pop. All right. Pop that corn. We'll pop that corn. Oh, look at here. We're going to catch him up here. And why not him there? Now, this is not my very best work. I seem to be in a very big hurry. And you know what? On a little sign like this, that's the very best thing that could happen. A little spontaneity is remarkable in a sign like this. No, it just is. All right, where are we going to pop these? Let's pop that one there. And I guess right there. All right. I suppose we should probably have a kernel of corn here, but let's just go ahead and pop him up there. And this might be too much, but we're going to pop him there. Okay. Now right there, kids, is a, a perfect example of hand lettering with the single stroke alphabet. 
Um, when this is uh, dry, I wipe it down. I can add a few more things, a little pinstriping, a this and a that. Uh, but I hope that this shows you, please don't be scared of hand lettering and silly nonsense like I do. I have a lot of pleasure with it. Uh, thanks for your uh, uh, time tonight and uh, just practice. Practice as much as you can. Thank you.